the last thing, you know, you're saying, man, is he ever going to get done? You go public. Go public. I was reading through Hebrews, and this just kind of intrigued me. Hebrews 10, 32 through 36 says, But remember the former days when after being enlightened, you endured a great conflict of suffering, partly by being made a public spectacle for reproaches and tribulations, and partly by becoming shares with those who were so treated. I'm not done with that, but I have to stop there because I think, you remember that day? You remember the day when you gave your life to Christ? You remember that very first day? Oh, it might have been scary, but I remember mine. I can hardly contain myself. I was going, I'm going into the world. I'm going to tell everybody about this Jesus because, man, he's freed me. I'm going to tell everybody about Jesus because they need to know. And I was excited. I was happy. I had been the light, man. I'm ready to do life. One thing I did, I won't encourage you to do is I said, bring it on, Satan. Don't do that. It says, but do you remember this? And then it says, for you showed sympathy to the prisoners and accepted fully the seizure of your property, knowing that you have for yourselves a better possession and a lasting one. Sam, what we were just talking about, maybe in Isaiah 32. It says, therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which is a great reward. And listen to this. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. When you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. What was promised? The kingdom. The kingdom. And I think about this public suffering. The man says, you suffer publicly. You know what happens to us many times? We suffer publicly. Maybe we even sin publicly. But you know what we do with that suffering and that sin? We hide it away. I've sinned publicly before. And, and we get embarrassed. Our pride creeps up. God talked a lot about pride last night. That pride creeps up inside me. I think, I don't want anybody to know what I did. Well, you just did it publicly, you idiot. You know what I need to do? Not only do I suffer publicly, but I bring praise to God publicly. And when I sin publicly, you know what I do? And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I try to do this as best as I can. I want to do it. I desire to do it because it's the right thing to do. But when I sin publicly, and there are people off on the sides that might have seen me, I go to them and I say, I just want to apologize to you for what I just did. You know what the remark is I get most of the time? What? doesn't matter. They might have, might have seen it. And maybe they're just trying to not embarrass me. But I want them to know that you just saw the worst in me. And I apologize for that because I'm going to be better. I want to take responsibility for my actions. But we go public. I love last night. I'm wrapping it up. Great. Put the handkerchief away. We've heard all kinds of awesome messages. I have loved every message this week. It's touched my heart. And I've got to tell you, when I left Thursday night, I was a little bit discouraged. Because I hear a lot of amens, and I hear a lot of preacher brothers, and I hear a, little, a lot of bones, bones, because that's the other Baptist thing. Yeah. Amen. And I started wondering, well, that amen that you're saying, is that for you, really, or is it for the person next to you? Amen. <laughs> i got to tell you, I'm not going to amen, John needs to hear this. See, aren't we good about that? Amen, brother. You preach it because I know so and so needs to hear this. Let me tell you something. I thought for a while as I was preparing, I thought, oh, I'm just preaching to the choir. No, I'm not. You are not the choir because you struggle the same way I do. And it's time for us to get honest about our sin. And it's time for us to get honest about our suffering. And it's time for us to get honest about our Savior. It's time to get honest about the fact that we will be with Christ in the millennial reign. We will be with Him in the new heaven and the new earth. That's assured. But why don't we act like we're maybe a little bit excited about it? And like it actually means something to us that we might actually go out and begin to make a difference in our world. Because this is what I was thinking. There's this statement out there that says the more things change, the more they stay the same. And can I tell you something? Grand Valley Baptist Association, you may think you've changed, but you haven't. You're the same. I've been the same. You see, it's not just good enough to come here and feel good about, I'm here, look at me. That's not good enough anymore. I want to be a person who's changed and people see the change. 
I want my church to be a church who has changed and people have seen the change. No, not just the little people inside the church because you know what? We're good to each other. We say, oh yeah, you changed. You say, you don't know me. I don't. But what I can tell you, and I'm just being honest, I haven't seen a lot of change in our association. Because you know what? This is about the same size crowd I say when I when I had I haven't been to one of these for about five or six years, I'll be honest. The crowd hasn't changed. The seats aren't full. You say, well, this is a time of revival. For crying out loud, there's people who need to be vibed. That's what Ray was teaching us. Where are they? Why aren't we inviting them? Why aren't your churches growing? Why aren't my church growing? Why aren't it? <laughs> college students are going to be teachers, so just forgive me. I wasn't actually going to make your English. I don't know why. <laughs> why aren't we growing? Because we're too busy suffering and making it all about us. It's time to change. You came to revival. For crying out loud, why don't you leave revived? Why don't you leave changed? Why don't you go out from here today and begin to make a difference in the world around you? I am making a promise to you. I am going to do that. This has torn me up. I, I, I sometimes see myself as doing great work, but my church isn't growing all that great. During Pentecost, they were adding to them daily. Where are we? It started with 12 men. How many are here today? Why are we growing? Because we go to revival and we come forward and we pray because somebody says, hey, why don't you come forward? Change our hearts with God. In Jesus' name.